Yes. Hello. Hey, Mr. Bean, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. So meet our guests. We have uh, with us uh, Dr. Komarjan Karimov, Dr. Faridun Sattarov, Professor Sultanova, Kamila Nikolaeva, Fakhridin Basarov, and also Elbek Abdullaev. Um, it's uh, incredibly, I mean, you have honored us by coming here. The only word I know in Uzbek is Dasvidaniya. So Dasvidaniya for joining us, Dasvidaniya for accepting our invitation <laughs> and agreeing to uh, educate us on what's happening in Uzbekistan because we're all from different countries and it's, it's surprising that we don't have so little information about Uzbekistan. So this is, I'm expecting to be educational and enlightening at the same time. So thank you so much. Okay. Thank you very much, Rosaba. And uh, Professor Sultanova. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, 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 yes. Uh -huh. And then we begin. So uh, we are going live on our Facebook page, Rutaba. Definitely do that. Let me work that out. Why don't you just start and work it on the background? So like and uh, could you please give uh, to Maria Bocherashvili access to the microphone because she will be a translator for Etibor Sadikovna. Anisha has the access. So just, mm -hmm. let, me, just let us know. Could you repeat the name? Ah. Who you want to tell me? Anisha? Yeah, President, I can hear you. Just um, give me a second. Mm -hmm. Mariam, are you here? Could you please turn on your microphone and your video? Yes, hello. Hello. Mm -hmm. And Mariam, you are a host right now. Uh, why? Uh, could you please give uh, your host position to Ginisha Devani? Oh. Just, just a moment. Yes, okay. Sorry for this uh, organizing moment. Uh, we will mm -hmm. begin in two minutes. How, how, how do I do that? I, I don't really know. Uh, you have a list of participants. Uh, then uh, find Ginisha Devani and uh, give uh, her a host by typing here. I, I think... I think, Rutaba. Yeah, I think I did it. Rutaba, you become our host. I am the host and I have given access to Mariam as the host as well. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, uh, we can start, I think. Yes. Yeah, we are good to go. Okay, thank you very much. So, Assalamu Alaikum. Ladies and gentlemen, as a country coordinator for Uzbekistan in International Association for Political Science Students Asia, I am pleased to welcome you to our panel discussion on the topic, the vectors of modernization of Uzbekistan, regional and global dimensions. We believe that experience and academic eligence of our speakers would help you to understand the emergence of Uzbekistan from the one of the post-Soviet countries to a young nation rapidly integrating into the world economy. Furthermore, their expertise will prove valuable to analyze the reform of the president, which were made in the domestic and foreign policy of the country, particularly making Central Asia as a region of priority in Uzbekistan foreign policy, to identify priority areas of mutual beneficial cooperation, achieve access to a concentrated result that can make our common region safer, stable, and more prosperous. This is why at IF's Asia, we decided to initiate a conversation to better analyze the reform of the president of Uzbekistan, which were made in the domestic and foreign policy of the country, as well as to present the changes to the world community. We know doing it online is not ideal, but on the bright side, we have been able to partner with some amazing organizations, including the University of World Economy and Diplomacy, the University of Oriental Studies, the Shanghai Center Cooperation uh, Center for Public Diplomacy in Uzbekistan, Kokan City Administration, and National Ensemble of Musical Instruments, Sarvagul, under the Department of Culture of Kokan City. It is their support that has made today's conference possible, and I'd like to thank them on the behalf of IEPS Asia. Today, your participations and questions will make this event an interactive session. So please feel free to use the comment section to give us your feedback, even though we have a segment specifically for the audience. At the end, 
Please note that our team will be making notes of your comments, recommendations, queries throughout the conference. So with that, I think it's time to introduce our estimate guests. First up, we have Dr. Komiljon Karimov. He's a rector of the University of World Economy and Diplomacy. He's a professional okay. diplomat. Mm. He served in a different position so as the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Uzbekistan. From 1995 to 2008, worked as a senior expert and national program officer of the National Commission of the Republic of Uzbekistan for UNESCO under the Cabinet of Ministers of the Republic of Uzbekistan. During 2008-2009, uh, served as a third secretary of the permanent delegation of the Republic of Uzbekistan to UNESCO. From 2014-2015, associate professor at the Department of National Economic Security Issues of the Academy of Public Administration. From 2015 uh, till um, September 2020, he was a rector of Westminster International University in Tashkent. And uh, on the 7th of September in 2020, he was appointed as a rector of the University of World Economy and Diplomacy. Thank you for coming, uh, Dr. Komarjan Karimov. Also, we have uh, Dr. Faridun Sattarov. Dr. Faridun Sattar holds a Master of Arts in Philosophy and Ethics from the University of Birmingham in the United Kingdom and a PhD in a Political Philosophy from the University of Wayne in the Netherlands. Dr. Sattar has worked as a research fellow at the UNESCO Bioethics and Ethics of Science section, the University of Liverpool School of Law, the University of Twenty, and the Technological University of Into Owen. His latest book titled Power and Technology. And since September 2019, Dr. Sattarov has been a tenure track associate professor of political science at the University of World Economy and Diplomacy. Uh, and since September 2020, Dr. Sattarov has also been appointed as a chair of the newly established Department of Political Science at the University of World Economy and Diplomacy. He is also an affiliate member of the 4TU Center for Ethics and Technology in the Netherlands. So thank you for coming, Dr. Sattarov. We also have with us Professor Etvor Sultanova. Uh, she worked as at the Tashkent Institute of Railroad Transfer first and an, assist, uh, an assistant, then an associate professor at the Department of Social Sciences from uh, 1980 to 1992. She was awarded the title of the professor in 1986. In 1993, on the recommendation of the president's office, she was invited to work at the University of World Economy and Diplomacy. And first, she worked as the head of the marketing department, then moved to the uh, to the Department of Foreign Policy and Diplomacy and was a head of this uh, department. Since 2007, she has been working as a professor at the Depart Department of Political Science of the university. Since 1998, she has been the chairman of Women's Committee of UVET, a member of the Presidium of the Republican of Association of Women Scientists, OLEMA. Dr. Kamila Nikolaeva is a political scientist with 12 years of experience in teaching at the university and studying problems of world development, global and regional conflicts. She holds a PhD in political science. She defended her thesis on the place and role of the People's Republic in China in solving global environmental problems in May 2020. She is a head of the Department of History, Culture, Politics and Economics of China in the Tashkent State University of Oriental Studies, participant of a number of international conferences and forums, author of more than 30 scientific publications. She enters the Almanac Young Researchers 100 True Stories by the Forum Project. Thank you for coming. Mr. Fakhridin Otbasarov works as the National Company of Uzbek Tourism in the position of Chief Specialist of the International Relations Department. During his working experience, he had a position in the different NGOs, and from 2017, uh, he holds a position of the head of the Department of Science and Education in the, in the Shanghai Cooperation Center for Public Diplomacy in Uzbekistan. Thank you for coming, Mr. Fakhridin Otbasarov. Mr. Elbek Abdullayev is a young independent researcher at the Department of Systemic Analysis. He is pursuing his PhD in Management uh, Digital Technologies. Also, he is studying Applied Accounting at the Oxford Brookes University. Moreover, he is a leader of Youth Unit for UWET and advisor to the Director on Youth Affairs. Elbeck is an organizer of managed projects at, at national and international levels. We are beyond to host Dr. Karimov, Dr. Sattarov, Dr. Nikolaeva, Professor Sultanova, Mr. Otbasarov, and Mr. Abdullayev and learn from their reports about the vectors of modernization of Uzbekistan. But before we will start our event, I would like to announce our uh, 
small uh, musical introduction. And right now, National Ensemble of Musical Instruments, Sarvegul, under the Department of Culture of Kakan City, will perform traditional Uzbek music to our guests from abroad and citizens. Uh, and we are also currently broadcasting live from the Palace of Hudayar Khan, the 11th ruler of the Uzbek Ming dynasty in the Kokan Khanat. So you can start. Botrala Arzumatov, you may start performing. You may start. So could you please give a uh, turn on the microphone to Botrali Arzematov? Kitty. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the musical introduction. It was the National Ensemble of Musical Instruments Servicul under the Department of Culture of Kakan City performing for us. Thank you very much. Okay, so we're uh, starting our panel discussion. So I would like to give the floor to Dr. Komarjan Karimov to make a welcome note, and then we will talk about the reforms in the foreign policy of our country.
Dr. Komarjan Karimov, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Fazlidzin. And um, I first of all would like to uh, welcome all the participants of this uh, great event. And I wish to start my welcome with words of thanks. And I would like uh, in particular to thank you, Fazlidzin, and uh, your colleagues, including uh, Ginisha and others, and all the organizers of this uh, virtual event. And uh, I'm sure you have done a great job uh, bringing all these uh, people, students, researchers, professors, uh, all of them, to, uh, you did a great job bringing them uh, together. And I think uh, despite the fact that today is a Sunday, it's a day off, uh, but uh, we see the great interest uh, from the parts uh, of the students and researchers uh, from uh, different parts of Uzbekistan and outside of Uzbekistan. This is great. And, um, uh, but uh, I would also like to uh, thank other organizers, including, uh, you know, our uh, friends from Kokand uh, for the great performance. And I think uh, this was a very symbolic start of uh, this event to showcase uh, the cultural richness of uh, this country, of Uzbekistan. And I think that's uh, very important for us to, uh, to, to showcase this and uh, actually, for, especially for those who are outside of Uzbekistan to see uh, this uh, great cultural uh, the richness of this country and the music itself, but also the allocation is very symbolic. Uh, the, uh, the, the performance was broadcast live from uh, the, the palace of uh, the ruler of uh, Kokand, uh, right? Uh, so the place yeah. in the middle of Uzbekistan, uh, which is known historically for its you know, culture, uh, for its great scientists and so on. So uh, I think this was very symbolic uh, start. So thank you for this. On thank the you. event itself, uh, yeah, I would like uh, to commend first of all, uh, the International Association for Political Science Students. I think this, uh, the great, uh, the idea to bring students who study political sciences from across the world together and uh, uh, it's, I think uh, what is good about it uh, is that uh, this uh, students. Oh. Yeah, sorry. Uh, sorry for this. Yeah, sorry. Yeah? Uh, so uh, it's good because uh, students who study political sciences, their future, uh, the politicians, the future leaders of their countries, their future. Uh, the uh, decision makers. And I think it's very good that uh, they brought together under the umbrella of this association because this will give them a chance to, to speak to each other, to better understand each other. I think that is uh, what is really missing in today's world. And we can see all the tensions across the countries and uh, across the uh, different uh, the continents, across the world, basically. And uh, this is uh, largely because people don't speak to each other or they don't understand each other. So I believe that uh, students uh, who, who are students today, but uh, future leaders of their countries, as they speak to each other, they will better understand each other. So in that sense, I think it was uh, the great idea to, uh, to, 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 to have this association. And uh, on the subject of uh, today's meeting, I would also like to say just a few words. I will elaborate more uh, during my own uh, the speech later on in a couple of minutes. But now uh, this, uh, the topic itself, the vectors of modernization of Uzbekistan, I think this was also uh, selected uh, quite well, the topic, uh, because Uzbekistan is undergoing very significant reforms in all the spheres, uh, you know, uh, in, in political sphere and economical and social and so on and so on. So, uh, and um, this is uh, largely again due to a political will of our leader, of uh, distinguished president of the country, uh, His Excellency, Mr. Shavkat Mirziyaev. And uh, since he uh, was elected as a president uh, from the very beginning, uh, he, uh, he actually uh, started these uh, uh, large uh, reforms in all these spheres. And uh, today I understand we will be uh, speaking about those different aspects of these uh, reforms, especially in the political uh, sphere. And, uh, but overall, I think uh, this, uh, what was done so far 
uh, for this short period or historically short period of time for these four years. Uh, the main achievement is that Uzbekistan has opened up uh, to the uh, to the world. You know, so it was uh, kind of uh, the reintroduction, I would suggest, of independent of Uzbekistan uh, to the whole uh, global society. I think that what uh, was uh, achieved, as I said, during this uh, short period of time. But we will, we will be speaking more about what was done, how it is being done, and what is actually the future for the country, uh, in, in, uh, I, I believe, uh, throughout this uh, one and a half hours. But now, uh, once again, it is my great pleasure uh, to be among the speakers of, of today's event. And uh, once again, I would like to uh, welcome all the participants on behalf of the University of World Economy and Diplomacy. And I believe uh, we will have a great uh, time today together. So thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Komarjan Karimov. So, okay, we'll start uh, our topic, reform is the foreign policy of the country. Uh, from the first day as a president, um, Shavkat Miramonich Mirzoyev set a course to, for reform and openness. In 2017, a five-year state development strategy was approved, which focused on liberalizing business and attractive foreign investment for the development of various vectors. So my question is, why have there been changes in Uzbekistan foreign policy? What is the role of digital and economic and public diplomacy at the present time? Yeah. Uh, so uh, thank you, Fazli Dean, for yes. your uh, question. And I think this is very uh, important uh, for us to understand why it is happening and what is happening. And I would uh, like to start with, with, with one uh, remark, you know, and uh, I think uh, one of uh, the participants uh, of this event, uh, Rutaba, is, if, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so she said that uh, it, is, uh, it is quite interesting that uh, not many people outside of Uzbekistan know this country well, you know? And it is true. Uh, yes, uh, Uzbekistan is, 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 you know, this country has uh, thousands and thousands of years of history. And our ancestors, they uh, did a lot actually to, uh, to, to uh, you know, to the world civilization, to develop sciences, uh, to develop culture, uh, you know, but uh, unfortunately, uh, not many people know about this. And that is a history, but I believe uh, what Uzbekistan, uh, they, 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 as, as, as an independent country, can also bring a lot uh, to, uh, to the world, uh, you know, the global societies uh, in, in many different uh, aspects, you know. Uh, but I think the, our great uh, the history, uh, great culture we have, and that's why I said it was very symbolic that we have started with this cultural performance in the, in the opening. I think this is something which uh, we can bring uh, to uh, to the global community because those kind of things are very much uh, needed uh, actually in today's world because uh, what we see now uh, and I have I say I think I have said this in in the beginning what we see now uh, is uh, is uh, lots of uh, the conflicts around the world you know different uh, uh, you know the uh, the, the, the conflictual situations uh, within the countries and across the countries. And uh, the key words now, especially for the last year, you know, when we have this pandemic now, uh, the key words now, isolation, the, uh, the, the closure of uh, borders, lockdowns, and things like this. This, of course, all this are not something which uh, stimulates uh, collaboration, and partnership, unfortunately. But what the world needs uh, today is really openness. It needs more collaboration. It needs more uh, partnership uh, between uh, countries, you know? And I think in that sense, what Uzbekistan is doing, and especially for the last uh, four years, this the policy of um, uh, openness is actually, uh, it is actually uh, directed uh, to uh, first of all, as I said, to reintroduce Uzbekistan to the entire uh, world, uh, the community, and actually to, uh, to, 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 to demonstrate that this country has a great potential 
in terms of its economic uh, the potential, in terms of its uh, human uh, resource uh, potential, and so on and so on. So this. Uh, obviously, Uzbekistan is doing this uh, with a very uh, clear and practical purpose. Uh, of course, uh, Uzbekistan is putting uh, by itself uh, the quite ambitious plans for the future in terms of its economic development. A very specific uh, plan is actually to double its current GDP level uh, by 2030. So in, ter in 10 years time to double the GDP, it's, it's very ambitious agenda. Uh, but I think this can on, only be done uh, by uh, partnering with, 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 with others, you know, uh, by bringing more uh, the investment into the country. Uh, but this requires obviously a more open uh, policies, uh, but more uh, open uh, the, uh, the policies in terms of the economic development, but also uh, in terms of the uh, diplomatic openness as well, you know, so. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, what uh, what really is needed. Uh, but uh, you have uh, said, I'm sorry, we have a, uh, I think, uh, background noise and someone. Yes, is... uh, okay. would someone turn off the microphone to don't press. So thank you very much. Yeah, sorry, you sorry, can sorry, it. No, no, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, so uh, and therefore, uh, as you have uh, said, Fazliddin, uh, in 2017, Uzbekistan has adopted uh, the. Uh, development strategy, countries' development strategy. That was uh, sort of a five-year plan uh, for the country uh, to develop. And I think that strategy has uh, very clearly outlined the priorities for uh, the country's development. It's it's uh, five priorities are outlined there. The one is uh, obviously the uh, the the reforms in the uh, the uh, the public administration. Uh, the second one is the legal reforms. The third one, the reforms in economic sphere. Uh, the fourth one is uh, the uh, development of the social sector, which includes obviously education, healthcare, and other uh, social uh, spheres. And the fifth one actually is the, uh, the, uh, the plan for development of Uzbekistan's uh, foreign policy, security, and so on. So these are the five major, five major uh, priorities uh, for the development of the country. And uh, what we have seen so far uh, was actually, uh, it is, I think, uh, what, what was significant, especially, it's not just uh, uh, the declaration of, uh, the, of, the, of, of the country's ambitions. No, it is, in fact, uh, quite well-structured uh, development uh, plan, uh, mid-term, five-year development plan, and what we have seen so far that most of the uh, the, uh, the the steps which were taken uh, in in these five spheres, they were done actually according to this plan. And I, I believe yes, uh, the uh, the plan is uh, up to 2021. Uh, but I'm sure uh, that reforms will continue after this period and uh, on this uh, the five uh, major uh, areas. In terms of the uh, the foreign policy priorities. I believe we will uh, speak about this in a minute, right? Uh, but I think overall, uh, the, the why it was done, uh, I think I have uh, highlighted the major reasons for this. For yes, this. yeah. Please, over to you. Thank you very much uh, for, this, for your speech about the first question. And you noticed about the plan. So what are the foreign policy priorities uh, for the Republic of Uzbekistan in 2020 and in the future? What causes for this choice? Yes, um, uh, I think uh, it's, it's again, very good question. And uh, Uzbekistan, I'm sure has uh, quite uh, uh, well defined uh, the foreign policy priorities and they were actually declared by uh, the head of our state, by a president in numerous occasions. And uh, the, uh, among these priorities, obviously, the major priority for Uzbekistan to develop a mutually beneficial uh, the partnership and collaboration with, with the neighboring countries, uh, with the Central Asia. And I think this was declared in our uh, foreign policy uh, doctrine. And the, uh, it is very clearly stated that Central Asia is the uh, major uh, foreign policy for Uzbekistan. And I think this is also 
are quite obvious uh, because uh, they, uh, as, as any country, Uzbekistan uh, needs to have uh, the uh, friendly, uh, mutually beneficial relations with its neighbors, right? It is especially relevant to Uzbekistan because it's, uh, as uh, the participants, uh, I think, quite well aware, there are only two uh, countries in the world which are double landlocked. Right, and yes. Uzbekistan amongst those two countries. You know, so we're very much therefore dependent in terms of the uh, the infrastructure, in terms of the logistics, in terms of the transportation. We're very much dependent on our uh, neighboring countries, right? So, and therefore, it's not just the only and uh, just the reason. No, of course, but among uh, the major reasons, are, uh, yes, that uh, we need to uh, work with uh, with our uh, neighbors with with the countries in Central Asia uh, to develop those you know infrastructures together because we also share uh, the common uh, history we share uh, the common legacy uh, you know and there are lots of things which actually unite the countries of uh, of the Central Asia and uh, I believe uh, only together. Uh, with with our neighbors, with our uh, the partners in the region in Central Asia, uh, we can uh, have a better economy for all of our countries, and we can have more a uh, stable, more peaceful region. Uh, and I think those are the major policy imperatives uh, for uh, for Uzbekistan and for our uh, neighbors. But. Uh, I think each country has its own uh, very special features in terms of the uh, resources we may have in countries, in terms of the human potential we have in our countries, in terms of the uh, logistical uh, the infrastructure we have. And I think uh, if we work together, if we uh, join our forces, join our resources, uh, we would have more prosperous, uh, more economically developed uh, region and also each country will benefit from this. Obviously, therefore, uh, again, I would repeat uh, the Central Asian, uh, the, the cooperation is one of the major uh, priorities for uh, foreign policy of Uzbekistan. Another priority is actually very much linked to the first one, and it is actually to uh, rebuild uh, the peace, of, uh, peace in our uh, again, uh, neighboring country in Afghanistan, and this is also among the uh, major foreign policy priorities for Uzbekistan, because Uzbekistan is sharing uh, uh, quite a large border with Afghanistan, and I think, again, uh, many of our participants uh, are aware that uh, for the last, uh, you know, over the 35 years, uh, this country was uh, experiencing uh, the uh, the conflict and war, uh, the civil war uh, was, a, uh, was ongoing for this country for, for, for about uh, more than 35 years. And of course, uh, we know, and then many, unfortunately, for the last uh, decades, Afghanistan was considered as a source of, uh, you know, the terrorism, source of a problem. Uh, but Uzbekistan and our president uh, in particular, uh, he suggests that Afghanistan could be a source of actually economic development. And uh, also from a foreign policy perspective of Uzbekistan, uh, we consider Afghanistan as a part of a larger Central Asian region. It's not only five countries of the uh, post-Soviet Union. Uh, which constitute uh, the Central Asia, but also uh, we uh, can see the Afghanistan as an integral part of uh, this region, uh, which can also uh, bring a lot on table, you know, uh, it can also bring its, its own potential. Afghanistan is also, in fact, uh, quite historically a uh, very culturally rich country, but also in terms of the, its resources and its potential. It is uh, actually the country which can uh, bring uh, you know, uh, if it is, of course, uh, the, the peace is rebuilt in this country, uh, then I think it can also be a source of uh, cooperation and source of the partnership and therefore source of economic development of the entire uh, Central Asian region. And also, therefore, this is, of course, a uh, very important and significant uh, priority for Uzbekistan is to rebuild uh, peaceful right. Afghanistan. Yes. So, and obviously, 
Overall, if we talk about other uh, foreign policy priorities, Uzbekistan is, is actually is, is, is very much uh, the, uh, towards the building equally mutual uh, partnership with other uh, partners. If you look at our uh, the uh, major trading partners, you will see among those uh, the partners, China is obviously is very large. Uh, the economic and trade partner of Uzbekistan, Russia is another a very significant economic and trade partner, uh, South Korea, Republic of Korea, uh, the, our neighbors, and uh, many uh, European Union is a significant partner uh, for Uzbekistan. And therefore, I think in terms of uh, the foreign policy, uh, one of the priorities is actually to, to have uh, mutually uh, beneficial uh, the uh, collaborative uh, the relations with all these uh, major uh, sources of uh, the economic power and stability. And also those I would suggest are, are main uh, the uh, vectors as, as, as you would say uh, for the uh, foreign policy of Uzbekistan. Mm -hmm. Over to you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, thank you a lot for giving information about and commenting the major foreign policy priorities for Uzbekistan. And you know, each year Uzbekistan declares a state program for each year. So what are the main roadmaps for the state program in 2020? Uh, you may just count them. Okay, uh, yes, to, to, to cut this uh, short, uh, yes, you're right, Uzbekistan, uh, we have this tradition to, uh, in order to highlight a certain priority for its internal development, uh, we have uh, each year has its own uh, special uh, the focus, special program, and this year is actually was declared as a year of uh, the uh, education, science, and the digital economy. And I think this is also uh, uh, demonstrates uh, the internal uh, the uh, the priorities uh, for development of Uzbekistan, and um, uh, the uh, the government of Uzbekistan uh, places very significant importance on uh, development of the social sector, human capital, as you would uh, suggest, right? And among those priorities, we see that the education, including higher education among those priorities, uh, development of science and innovation is another very important priority for the country. And also the digital, digital economy is a very significant uh, priority, but also source for potential development. And therefore, I think these three uh, areas are the, uh, the uh, selected as the priorities for uh, the uh, for development of Uzbekistan. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Komarjan Karimov, for coming. First of all, for coming for this event, and uh, secondly, for giving the information about the four policy priorities uh, of Uzbekistan. Thank you very much. It was uh, it was uh, a speech of uh, Dr. Komarjan Karimov, director of the University of World Economy and Diplomacy, Tashkent, Uzbekistan. Thank, Thank you, you Fazlidin. It was my pleasure uh, to speak to you. And if uh, our participants will have questions, I, I will I love to respond to them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. OK, we're moving to our next panel. It is uh, economic modernization. Uh, Uzbekistan is becoming more open to economic interaction, not by eroding its sovereignty, but by improving the efficiency of legislation and public administration, as noticed uh, Dr. Komarjan Karimov. The main goal of economic reforms is the uh, transition of the Uzbek economy to a market economy, and it's called integration into the economic system in order to ensure the growth of national welfare and standards of living of citizens. And so I would like to give the floor to Elbek Abdullayev, uh, to make a presentation about the uh, economic reforms uh, in Uzbekistan. So could you please give uh, permission to demonstrate the screen of Elbek Abdullayev? May I start? Yes, Elbek Abdullayev. Thank uh, you for coming. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, dear all, dear participants, dear uh, doctors, professors. It's a great honor uh, to participate in such a panel discussion as a researcher. And uh, today, uh, today's our topic is uh, business environment of. Uh, 
can I uh, share my screen? Uh, yes, I you may. Uh, host should give uh, permission ah. to me. Uh, Ganesha or Rutaba, could you please give a permission to yeah, Elbeka sure. Dula? Sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, could you see the presentation now? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, today's our topic is uh, improvement of the business environment in Uzbekistan. Uh, uh, you know, uh, the economy plays a uh, crucial role in every country uh, with uh, Politics and as a Dr. Kamal Jan Karim mentioned, uh, economic growth of uh, country uh, attracting foreign investment and digital economy plays a crucial role in every country. And uh, first of all, we'll start with uh, legislative framework. Uh, as you know, over the five uh, over the past uh, five years, uh, a lot of uh, uh, degrees and uh, important. Uh, uh, laws uh, was adopted uh, in uh, one of the most important areas of action strategy areas of the Uzbekistan is the development of entrepreneurship and simplification of uh, simplifi simplification uh, conditions for doing business uh, through doing uh, through simplification of the, uh, this launching business we can uh, allow to our country open up uh, new opportunities and increase employment rate among youth, among uh, people, and ensure uh, stable, significant uh, growth for uh, our business. And uh, also, uh, uh, and uh, yeah, here is uh, also. Uh, the purpose uh, of this report is to identify uh, strengths and weakness of Uzbekistan in this area, uh, especially in terms of economy and uh, economic development. And uh, well, today uh, we are going to analyze uh, economic development through uh, doing business indicator and uh, with other... Uh, 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 Sir, we have some noise. Uh, could you please? Haidara Ulobek, could you please turn off your microphone? And uh, thanks. Uh, here you can see key indicators of ease of doing business in, uh, in Uzbekistan 2020. And uh, thanks to the measure taken, Uzbekistan has improved uh, his position uh, in the doing business ranking from the 166th place in uh, 2012. Uh, to the uh, 69th place in 2020. The target for the uh, next two years is to enter top 20 uh, leading countries in the doing uh, business rating. And uh, I'm sure uh, we, will, uh, uh, we will enter uh, to the top 20 leading countries. And if we take a look uh, to indicators, uh, 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 here is four uh, main uh, indicators which we have positive uh, results uh, is of in, in terms of ease of uh, doing business uh, our country ranked in uh, 69th and starting a business uh, in eighth place with a score uh, 96 and enforcing contracts in a 22nd place with a 72 score, uh, 72 score, and getting electricity. Uh, our country is in a 36th uh, rank with 87 score, and protecting minority investors. Uh, uh, 37th place in uh, with uh, uh, 70. Uh, and also, we have a good result in, uh, in getting credit, paying taxes, but we have a little lag in uh, resolving insolvency, dealing with construction permits, and trading across borders. Uh, and the most successful indicators of ease of doing business in Uzbekistan. In starting business, uh, as you can see, uh, 
uh, there is a positive trend over the past eight years and also in getting electricity and protecting minority investors we have a positive trend over the past decade or over the past nine years uh, mm -hmm. next slide. Yes. Uh, yeah trading across uh, borders uh, you know uh, it's uh, very uh, 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 how to say uh, we, we have a lack in some indicators uh, trading across border is one of them uh, here we can see uh, comparative analysis uh, comparative indicators of Kazakhstan Singapore and Uzbekistan uh, in uh, the cost of export and import during custom control and processing uh, of document is high in our country export document take uh, approximately 100 uh, hours to complete custom control and uh, custom control takes uh, 32 hours uh, approximately uh, while import documents take 150 hours and custom control takes in importing uh, 110 uh, 11 hours uh, the next slide uh, compared analysis of uh, these indicators uh, uh, the table shows the positions of Singapore, Kazakhstan, and our country, Uzbekistan. Uh, in Uzbekistan, non-transport tariffs are a limiting factor for the development of foreign trade operations. The majority uh, entrepreneurs are unable to prepare documents uh, accurately, correctly, and uh, on time, and they are, uh, most of them are not aware of official terms and costs in some cases. And uh, another important uh, problem in uh, exporting and importing is a low level of training of staff, uh, private sector of private sector and agencies. And uh, the next slide is uh, measuring being implemented to improve Uzbek's positions on trading across border. Uh, as it's a problematic issue in our country, we should uh, take uh, some measures uh, to improve this. Uh, and uh, in this slide, you can see uh, taken uh, take uh, measures from uh, 2012 to 2019. Uh, uh, ways to solve the problem. Uh, in this slide, uh, we show uh, how to solve problem of improving positions of uh, on the indicator trading across border as experience of Singapore and Kazakhstan in order to reduce the time and cost for uh, export and import operations. Uh, it's necessary to introduce electronic methods of registration. Here, uh, digital economy plays a crucial role and uh, we should simplify the registration process and in custom sphere and uh, we should uh, introduce to our uh, private sector new information communication technologies and it's necessary go uh, to it's necessary to go online and apply the principles of single window uh, which is implemented in, in uh, our uh, in Uzbekistan two years ago and uh, in it will uh, provide uh, Uzbekistan with a reduction in terms of custom procedure and related costs. And mm -hmm. the next slide dealing with the construction permit. Uh, yeah, in in the construction sphere, we have a little problem as a, and uh, the sphere of capital construction is one of uh, is one of the most particular important uh, for the developing entrepreneurship in our country is Uzbekistan is targeting uh, to by the end of this uh, by the end of the next year uh, uh, and also it's planned to end uh, to enter Uzbekistan among uh, the uh, mm -hmm. 50 leading countries of the world according to this indicator uh, uh, currently, Uzbekistan ranks uh, 132nd in uh, in uh, uh, dealing with construction permit indicator, and yeah. uh, here you can see uh, dynamics of this indicator on and also uh, scores uh, or uh, rankings of Singapore and Kazakhstan. Uh, among them, Uzbekistan is in the third place with 32. 
uh, score, uh, the lowest one. And the next uh, slide is mm -hmm. a comparative yeah. analysis of uh, dealing with construction permit uh, Uzbekistan, Singapore, and Kazakhstan. Uh, here you can see uh, procedures, number of procedures, time, uh, days, and cost of warehouse. Uh, in Uzbekistan, mm -hmm. you can see uh, here is three percent of cost uh, warehouse, while in uh, Singapore three point five, and in Kazakhstan zero point four. And mm -hmm. building quality control is from zero to fifteen. Uh, in Singapore and mm -hmm. Kazakhstan the similar uh, indicate uh, the similar as we saw in uh, ranking and mm -hmm. in Uzbekistan 11. Mm -hmm. And um, Mr. Elbek Abdullah, uh, you may just uh, count the main achievements of the country's uh, economic modernization stage. Uh, what is the main achievements of our country in this stage? Ah, uh, thank you for your question. Uh, the main uh, points is uh, all the five, all the past five years is uh, modernizing our uh, economy, especially in industry, uh, and also and uh, services. Uh, not only uh, uh, we are exporting uh, not only traditional services, but uh, from the uh, previous year. Uh, our main uh, focus uh, in services is in other untraditional services like in, in exporting uh, information, IT services. And uh, you know, uh, we have a uh, last year, uh, according to the decree of president, uh, uh, His Excellency Shokat Mirziyev, there is a project, uh, 1 million Uzbek coders. Uh, uh, it's aimed to, uh, uh, to increase uh, our services, not only in traditional sphere, but also in uh, new technology sphere. And also uh, main, uh, let's say, uh, main- You mean in the digital economy, yes? Yeah, uh, digital economy. And also in traditional sphere, uh, from year to year, uh, we're attracting more FDI to our uh, industry. Uh, FDI, I mean, uh, foreign direct investment and uh, uh, every year, uh, our uh, growth of GDP is uh, between um, uh, five uh, and seven percent. As Dr. Kamal John Karim mentioned, uh, by the end of this decade, by the uh, in to the 2003, uh, we should double our uh, GDP according to uh, all uh, measures. Um, mm -hmm. Um, yes, uh, you may, uh, we have a lack of time because of, uh, uh, we have some limits, but uh, you may uh, just uh, brief what you have said about the economic modernization stage, and then we move to our next panel. So, Elbek Abdullah, your concluding remarks for the economic modernization. Uh, conclusion remarks, uh, yeah, uh, we should, uh, in, uh, in future, in the uh, uh, we should, according to my presentation, uh, there is some conclusion. Uh, in two years or in, in five years, we should uh, continue all our uh, economic uh, uh, policy, uh, especially in uh, terms of uh, attracting foreign uh, foreign investment at the and in digital uh, economy sphere. If you have mm -hmm. questions, please feel free to give, feel free to ask. Mm -hmm. and the presentation is over. Okay, thank you very much, Elbek Abdullah, for your presentation. You uh, have a lot of data on your presentation. That is very interesting. Then we will share this presentation to, with our audience. Uh, then they can uh, better analyze what we have to do. So thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Uh, okay, we move to our next panel. Uh, reforms in the domestic policy and political science itself. And uh, I would like to talk with uh, Faridun, uh, Dr. Faridun Sattarov, 
uh, within the framework of the adopted strategy, a set of measures was carried out of liberalized public relations and strengthened the institution of human rights. The most significant decision is that teaching of political science has resumed in educational institutions. Many news publications and the news agencies have been removed from the censorship and discussions on socially important and accurate problems in the public information uh, field have been allowed. So. Uh, Dr. Sattarov, I would like to ask you a question. What is your general assessment of the social, economic, and political reforms taking place in our country? Hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you. Audible what enough. Uh, well, my, my general assessment of the, of the social, economic, and political reforms taking place in this country uh, is quite positive. Uh, the, the, the previous uh, speakers have uh, already spoken about uh, uh, social and economic reforms and changes uh, in the domestic area uh, that's been taking place over the course of the last five, four or five years. Uh, for this reason, I would like to talk a little bit more about uh, political governance in this country reform of the governance system and uh, uh, first there are things that, that have been done and second there are things that still need to be done. Um, to begin with uh, there has been a serious uh, step towards uh, fair and transparent elections in this country. Uh, we should note that the parliamentary elections that took place last year uh, under the slogan of uh, new uzbekistan new elections has received positive and uh, constructive assessment from external observers uh, for the first time about 316 uh, uh, observers from the office for democratic institutions and human rights uh, of the organization for security and cooperation in europe uh, came over uh, to observe the elections. Uh, international observers have emphasized that the elections were held in, a, in an atmosphere of uh, healthy competition, uh, heated debates and uh, discussions. And uh, there were discussions between political parties on, on public uh, fora and uh, the significantly increased role of, of the, the media. Mm -hmm. So this is something that I, I, I see as a, as a positive development uh, in the electoral system uh, of the Republic. And uh, the other one that I would like to mention is the independence of uh, the judicial system, the independence of the courts of law. So one of the most important tasks uh, that still remains uh, uh, is to fully ensure the uh, independence of the judicial system in this country. Um, the legislative measures that have been uh, adopted, that have been taken, are already yielding some uh, results. Uh, for example, I would like to mention the fact that the UN Special Rapporteur on the Independence of Judges, Mr. Diego Garcia Sayan, also acknowledged um, positive change in, in, in this particular area. Uh, the president of the Republic of Uzbekistan has also emphasized that, uh, and I'm quoting him here, that the time has come to clearly raise the question of the reasons for the violation of human rights, uh, to be accountable for cases uh, of undue pressure in the process of the pre-trial proceedings. And, uh, uh, the task of ensuring the independence of the courts uh, will continue to be under the personal control of the president. Uh, overall, I would like to point out that in uh, reforming the system of governance in this country, there is a clear shift or move towards scientific and fact-based approach to political governance. Uh, the fact that the political science has been reinstated, as we mentioned earlier, um, uh, it's been reinstated in uh, 2019 uh, as a subject to be taught at uh, a number of universities in Uzbekistan. And uh, this fact is uh, indicative and quite symbolic 
uh, of this shift towards science-based and fact-based approach to political governance. Yes, you are right, uh, Dr. Satarov. And uh, in your capacity as the head of the Department of Political Science at uh, the Universal World Economy and Diplomacy, what do you think are the main challenges facing political sciences in general and your department uh, in particular? Um, thank you for your question. It's quite an interesting question, something that I've been, uh, that I have to deal with on a daily basis. Um, as, as you may know, there has been a hiatus in the progress of political science in our country. Uh, the, this political science department uh, has been established last year in 2019. Uh, I was appointed the first head of the department this year, uh, so, since September. Uh, so far we have hired one full professor, two associate professors and one senior lecturer. Uh, we have been teaching uh, 31 undergraduate students in political science uh, since last year, so they are now in their second year. Uh, last year we also trained uh, 10 uh, uh, graduate uh, applied political science students. Uh, this year more than 40 undergraduate students have uh, enrolled uh, to read political science at this university. Uh, these are, in my view, these are quite positive results in terms of attracting students to this uh, exciting field. Um, yet there are uh, challenges ahead of us. Um, first, uh, I would note, uh, I would like to note that there is a need for political science researchers at this university. We need to hire and train more young scholars in this area. Uh, we are now in the process of hiring two more research assistants uh, at our department. Uh, the idea is to help them become uh, experienced and independent researchers in this field. And we are doing this, or we are trying to hope, uh, we, are, we are hoping to achieve this by involving them directly in our own uh, ongoing research. Uh, further, we would like to help uh, these research assistants begin their own independent uh, research at the doctoral yes. or postdoctoral level. And uh, second, uh, we need to move or shift political science uh, research and teaching towards less uh, theoretical and more applied areas of political science. Uh, Yes, you are right. You uh, you mentioned uh, the research, so you have uh, got a background in political studies of modern technology, and your recent uh, book uh, discusses the relationship between power and technology, and it's called Power and Technology. What do you think about the potential development of this area of research in our country? Well, uh, b before saying something about the development of of this particular area of research. We need uh, to develop uh, more fundamental areas of political science first. And one of them, as I mentioned, is uh, we need a, a, a move towards practical or applied areas of political science. The, uh, um, and uh, we are now uh, at the university, we are now uh, in the process of establishing applied political science subjects uh, which teach students uh, data analytical methods uh, in assessing social, uh, in assessing the politics, uh, political data, uh, also social scientific methods for policy analysis and forecast. Um, at the same time, uh, we would like to see the development of the field, uh, to, uh, fields such as uh, technology governance, uh, politics of technology. Um, uh, that, that's, uh, there have been a number of uh, international scholars working in this area. Uh, I, I, I myself uh, do research in this particular area. Um, mm -hmm. This is an uh, important area of research insofar as it prepares society to address the ever greater issues and the challenges presented by advances in, in technology, advances in robotics, in artificial intelligence, and 
uh, emerging biotechnology in uh, autonomous uh, weapons systems uh, as uh, we are uh, moving towards a greater digitalization of our economy in this country, uh, I think it would be proper and prudent to inject some uh, ethical and uh, political thinking into uh, these kinds of reforms. Mm -hmm. And uh, well. but there's just yes. one one moment I'd like to mention. Yes, yes, uh, no problem, no problem. Yes, yes, you can, uh, you may continue. To achieve some of these uh, objectives and to to meet some of these challenges, we are also seeking for international cooperation. Uh, namely, we need to establish uh, and expand the cooperative links with universities abroad. Uh, there are two directions in which we would like to take our international cooperation. On the one hand, we would like to uh, to, to attract more professors and lecturers uh, in, in political science, working at top universities abroad, uh, both to come and work here at our university or to deliver online lectures, uh, given these, uh, this whole COVID pandemic. And uh, on the other hand, uh, we have just started looking for potential partner universities in Asia, in Europe and in the Americas. Uh, to establish a so-called joint uh, or double degree undergraduate and uh, graduate programs in political science. Uh, so this yes. is one of the uh, one of the areas in which we're working right now. Okay, thank you very much uh, for your speech about the reforms uh, in the political science sphere and the domestic policy itself. And as you mentioned, we need an international cooperation and uh, it is our next panel. Uh, it's uh, about the participation of Uzbekistan in regional integration processes. We'll talk with Dr. Kamila Nikolaeva uh, about this topic, and uh, I would like to brief about these uh, processes. Uzbekistan approach to international integration fully corresponds to the adopted strategic documents. Tashkent strives to preserve its sovereignty and increase its own international weight, and therefore seeks to maintain a balance in the issue of interaction with external partners. So, uh, Dr. Kamila Nikolaeva, I give you a uh, floor to do a report about this topic. Uh, good day, uh, colleagues and participants. Uh, thank you for visiting. Uh, it's, um, it's a pleasure for me uh, to, uh, to have a speech uh, on this panel. And my topic is participation of Uzbekistan in um, regional integration processes. And uh, our um, speakers um, mentioned, have mentioned uh, the strategy, the development strategy of Uzbekistan. Uh, and um, I would like to draw your attention that this strategy is the first clear uh, state strategy for um, social, economic, political, educational, um, security spheres of our republic. And uh, according to this uh, strategy, our um, you know, Republic, Republic of Uzbekistan is open to regional and international integration processes. Uh, as an uh, expert, I would, uh, I would like to emphasize uh, three organizations uh, which, uh, to which Uzbekistan is uh, paying attention. Uh, now uh, it's uh, CIS, uh, it's uh, uh, Commonwealth of Independent States. Uh, the, uh, the second one is Shanghai Cooperation Organization. And the third one now is uh, Eurasian uh, Economic Union. And so uh, in Uzbekistan now, uh, there is a great need for uh, free and uh, uh, mutually beneficial interaction with the international community. Uh, and uh, uh, in this regard, uh, an active dialogue has begun on Uzbekistan entry to the World Trade Organization uh, negotiations uh, on an enhanced partnership and cooperation agreement with the European Union. Uh, and uh, if you go back uh, to um, 19, uh, uh, 2019, Uzbekistan submitted an updated memorandum on the foreign trade regime to consider uh, an application for the country's entry to the uh, WTO organization. And um, the role of, of Uzbekistan is growing both in Central Asia 
uh, region and within the framework of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Uh, Uzbekistan also views the CIS as an effective platform for deepening uh, practical partnership and increasing the effectiveness of multilateral uh, cooperation, uh, primarily in the development of trade and economic relations, promoting, promoting joint projects and varied, uh, various industries, disclosing transport, logistics and transit opportunities, uh, and also strengthening uh, regional security and cultural and humanitarian exchange uh, between our countries, be, between uh, member states of this organization. And um, uh, according to the um, uh, cooperation with uh, Shanghai Organi Cooperation Organization, I would uh, to say, uh, I'd like to say uh, that uh, we have uh, two bodies of this organization in our republic. It's uh, the regional anti-terrorist structure uh, that plays a special role in the issues of uh, strengthening peace and security. At, uh, and the, its main um, purpose is to promote, uh, coordinate and cooperate of member states in uh, the fight against terrorism, extremism and religious, um, religious extremism, yeah. And the second body is the uh, People's Diplomacy Center of the uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Uh, and uh, this body um, main task and areas of activity of this center uh, assistance uh, and uh, strengthening mutual trust and good neighbor uh, neighbor uh, cooperation, uh, interacting and interface harmony, development of inter civilization exchange, inter, inter uh, civilization dialogue. Uh, according to the uh, cooperation with uh, Commonwealth, the Commonwealth of Independent States, uh, I would like to say that Uzbekistan considers that uh, this organization. Uh, is a coordinating mechanism uh, for multi-aspect inter interaction and platform uh, for uh, direct communication and inter-state uh, dialogue, uh, including bilateral contacts uh, within the CIS between uh, heads of state. And also as an entity uh, of sovereign state motivated uh, to create conditions for multilateral cooperation. Uh, and uh, according to the cooperation with the Euro-Asian Economic Union, uh, we know that uh, on April 20, uh, on April 28 uh, this year, the Parliament of Uzbekistan, with a majority vote, uh, approved the government proposal to become an observer uh, state to the European Economic Union. Uh, of the 132 members of Parliament who were present to vote, uh, uh, 86 uh, voted for, uh, 32 voted against, and uh, 14 abstained. Uh, and so uh, these uh, three organ organizations, uh, they, uh, these three organizations are very significant for us for our country, for cooperation with uh, member states of these uh, organizations. Yes, thank you very much, Camilla, Dr. Camila Nikolaeva. And uh, oh, I have a question. Why Uzbekistan uh, has to join to the integration uh, unions? And as you mentioned uh, that we joined uh, on the April of this year as an observer in the Euro uh, Eurasian Union. So final way, will Uzbekistan join uh, full as the Eurasian Union. Uh, okay, uh, the issue of the Republic of Uzbekistan uh, entry to the uh, to this organization, Eurasian Economic Union, has been widely discussed uh, by our scientists, by all over the world scientists. Uh, the very uh, the consideration of which has become possible in connection with the cardinal changes uh, since uh, 2017. Uh, in the foreign economic strategy of Uzbekistan. Uh, and uh, uh, the Euro Asian Economic Union issues coming up for parliamentary deliberation and the vote was an unplanned turn of uh, events. Uh, the matter of membership and such uh, decisions uh, were seen as confined to the executive level. Uh, but yes. uh, in the State of the Union speech of our president, President Shavkat Mirziyoyev, 
uh, on Jan in January 2020 announced the transfer of the decision to members of the parliament to make uh, in its people's decisions. Uh, if they approve, we approve as well. Uh, and if they disapprove, we will disapprove. Yes, you are right. Yeah. You're right. Thank you for asking. Thank you for your speech about the Uzbekistan participation in the regional uh, integration processes. It was a speech of Dr. Kamila Nikolaeva. Dr. Kamila Nikolaeva is the head of the Department of Chinese Culture, Literature and Politics. Thank you for coming, Dr. Kamila Nikolaeva. Then we move to the, our next panel. Is the role of public diplomacy in the strengthening the friendship of peoples in the example of Shanghai Cooperation Organization Center for Public Diplomacy? And uh, so, uh, uh, Uzbekistan, uh, uh, the goal of Mirziyoyev's policy is to consider politics by other means, but not within the framework of traditional uh, scheme of diplomatic activity, but through the tool of soft influence, people's diplomacy, the use of which can change the modern world in many ways. President also focuses on the contribution of this center for public diplomacy in Uzbekistan in strengthening friendship between the peoples and its interaction, the framework of social, political, cultural, humanitarian uh, events, which is the fifth point of our strategy document. So I'd like to give the floor to Dr. Uh, Mr. Fakhridin Odbasarov uh, to do a report about this uh, uh, panel. So. Uh, Dr. Fakhredin Ozbasarov, could you please turn on your audio? Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you ever so much uh, for inviting me to this nice event. Uh, distinguished participants of the conference, ladies and gentlemen. The role of public diplomacy in strengthening the friendship of peoples. The public diplomacy, which has become an integral part of official diplomacy, an important addition to it, has been increasingly gaining momentum in the recent years. Public diplomacy includes interaction of civil society and public organizations and serves as a unique tool in the development of international relations. Public diplomacy includes cooperation with NGOs, sister city relations, social movements and others. Such cooperation is performed not only by official authorities and government bodies, but also by the people themselves and their most active representatives. Public diplomacy has a number of advantages compared to official diplomacy. Here people will be able to express their feelings much wider and deeper. Therefore, it is not for nothing to say heart-to-heart -heart diplomacy. Public diplomacy includes international relations and contacts through the implementation of cultural, scientific, educational programs. It is the best mechanism to establish friendship and mutual understanding between people. I would like to take this opportunity uh, to talk about this, uh, about our center for public diplomacy in Uzbekistan that I am representing in this conference. At the summit of heads of states of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization uh, held in 2017 in Nur Sultan city, which is in Kazakhstan, delegation of Uzbekistan has initiated to establish permanent institutions of public diplomacy in all member countries. A year later, President of Uzbekistan approved decree on establishing of the SEO Center for Public Diplomacy in Uzbekistan in a form of non-governmental, non-profit organization. The center's main tasks are as follows. First, uh, promoting mutual trust and good neighbor relations, inter-ethnic and inter-religious harmony, development of inter-civilizational dialogue between the SEO countries, expanding of culture, cultural and humanitarian ties between the SEO countries, establishing of a friendly atmosphere between the institutions of civil society, including youth and women's organizations, promoting cooperation in inf information sphere collaboration with mass media, using the instrumental instruments of public diplomacy to bring the SEO countries and their peoples closer, strengthening the spirit of mutual trust and mm -hmm. neighbor, good neighborliness. 
since uh, its establishment, the center organized a number of events aimed at developing multifaceted cooperation in the fields of culture, education, science, and technology, as well as strengthening mutual trust and friendship between peoples. Mm -hmm. So uh, during our meetings with local people, for example, uh, on the eve of the Victory Day, we organized an archive photos exhibition in St. Petersburg in Russia. Oh. In title, the memory of people is sacred. That's the title. The exhibition contained okay. pictures of our compatriots who fought and died on the thresholds of Leningrad during World War II, as well as residents of the city evacuated to our country. So during the meetings with the local people, we found that all citizens of St. Petersburg still remember the years of World War and uh, evacuation to our country. But the younger generation has little information about the events of those years. In this regard, regards, uh, the archive photos exhibition has one, uh, once again become an important event to rem remember the common history and to create a sense of mutual respect and friendship. Mm. On the occasion of uh, 150 year uh, birth uh, anniversary of outstanding Indian statesman Mahatma Gandhi, we organized a seminar uh, the public diplomacy in the philosophical teachings of Mahatma Gandhi, jointly with the Tashkent State University of Oriental Studies. Mm -hmm. It is also worth to mention that last year we arranged ACO Hall of Knowledge at Alisher Nawai National Library, which contains more than 400 books in Uzbek, Russian, English, Persian, Kazakh, Kyrgyz, Hindu, uh, Urdu and Chinese languages on the history of SEO member countries, their social, political, cultural, and humanitarian spheres. Fantastic. Uh, Your organization is doing uh, a great work. Uh, I think that we should create this kind of organization uh, across the world. So uh, what do you think? Are there similar structures that operate abroad and conduct public diplomacy policies? Do they exist in the Shanghai Cooperation Organization countries? Our international uh, cooperation mainly involves SEO member states, observers, dialogue partners. Yes. We have established close relations with the uh, diplomatic missions of the SEO member states in Tashkent. Uh, only China, China and Uzbekistan have such a public institution aimed primarily at strengthening mutual trust and good neighborliness and establishing a friendly atmosphere of interaction between the SEO countries. I would wow. say about the cooperation with the Chinese SEO Committee on Good Neighborliness, Friendship and Cooperation. Uh, so Memorandum of Understanding signed with the Indian uh, Council for International Affairs, partnership links established with the Institute of, uh, for Strategic Studies of Pakistan, Chinese oh. Public Diplomacy Association, Belarusian Institute for Strategic Studies and the Russian Science uh, culture center in Tashkent. We send a partnership request to, to the assemblies of the people of uh, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, social organizations in Tajikistan. Nevertheless, similar uh, centers will open in other SEO countries in the future, we hope, oh. uh, which would contribute to the development of the close uh, cultural humanitarian ties between the SEO countries. This would uh, allow uh, such centers as ours to directly contact with close partners. Thank wow, you. that's fantastic. That's fantastic. I think that we will create this kind of organizations in the future. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Fahred, uh, Mr. Fahreddin al for your You're speech welcome. on the people's diplomacy. So we are moving to our next panel, and it's about the Uzbekistan role in achieving stability in Central Asia. And uh, we uh, Uzbekistan is the only country in Central Asia that is located in the heart of the region of five states. It borders with Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, and Afghanistan. In these countries, ethnic Uzbeks are the second or third largest ethnic group. It's beneficial for Uzbekistan to have a good relation with the neighborhood countries, since it's historically and geographically linked uh, on all issues in the region. This phenomenon had to be used for the benefit of the peoples. 
of the region. It is for the reason that peace and stability are being strengthened in the country in the region, uh, as well thanks to the far-sighted policy pursued by the president of Uzbekistan, Shafkat Mirziyoyev, and uh, a doctor uh, of science uh, professor uh, Sultan of Etvorsidikna will do a uh, uh, report about the Uzbekistan role in achieving stability in Central Asia, and also we have a, a translator to uh, English. It's uh, Mariam Bocherashvili. So, Etvor uh, Sadekovna, floor is yours. Добрый день, участники нашей дискуссии. Спасибо за предоставленную возможность uh, выступить и высказать свои точки зрения на данной дискуссии. Uh, good afternoon, dear participants of our discussion. Thank you for the opportunity uh, to present my point of view on it. Сегодняшняя дискуссия посвящена актуальной не только для Узбекистана, но и для всего Центральноазиатского региона проблеме. The today's discussion is dedicated to a problem that is relevant not only to Uzbekistan but also to the whole region of Central Asia. Это обусловлено необходимостью решения ряда стратегических задач в плане обеспечения стабильности в Центральной Азии. Прежде чем о них говорить, отметим, что в Конституции Узбекистана есть специальная статья 17, где отмечается, что Республика Узбекистан является полноправным субъектом международных отношений. Ее внешняя политика исходит из принципов суверенного равенства государств мирного урегулирования споров, не вмешательства во внутренние дела государств. Республика может заключать союзы, входить в содружество и другие межгосударственные образования, а также выходить из них, исходя из высших интересов государства. Исходя из этого тезиса, осуществляется внешняя политика нашей страны. This is due to the need to address a number of strategic challenges in terms of ensuring stability in Central Asia. Before talking about them, it should be noted that Article 17 of the Constitution of Uzbekistan indicates that the Republic of Uzbekistan shall have full rights in international relations. Its foreign policy shall be based on the principles of sovereign equality of the states, peaceful statement of uh, disputes, non-interference in the internal affairs of other states. The Republic may form alliances, join or withdraw from the unions and other interstate organizations proceeding from the ultimate interests of the state. On the basis of this thesis, the foreign policy of our country is carried out. Важно в определении нашей внешней политики последние годы является принятие в феврале 2017 года стратегии действий по пяти приоритетам Республики Узбекистан. В стратегии обозначена философия нашего развития – обеспечить совершенствование системы государственного общественного строительства, обеспечить верховенство закона, решать вопросы развития и либерализации экономики, развивать приоритетные направления социальной сферы. И все это будет фундаментом для решения задач в сфере обеспечения безопасности межнационального межрелигиозного согласия, толерантности и осуществления взвешенной, взаимовыгодной и конструктивной внешней политики. Important in determining our foreign policy in recent years is the adoption uh, in February 2017 of the action strategy for five priority areas of the Republic of Uzbekistan for 2017 to 2021. In the strategy, the philosophy of our development is indicated improving the system of state and public construction, ensuring the rule of law, addressing issues of economic development and liberalization, development of priority areas in the social sphere. All of these will be the foundation for tasks in the sphere of security, inter-ethnic and inter-religious harmony, tolerance and implementation of balanced, mutually beneficial and constructive foreign policy. Учитывая, что много в обеспечении безопасности страны связано с участием лидера нашей страны, на международной арене его имиджем и выдвигаемыми инициативами с гордостью отметим, что в последние годы президент Узбекистана Шавкат Мерзиёев не только поддерживает двусторонние и многосторонние контакты Узбекистана со странами мира, международными организациями, но и дважды с трибуны Генеральной Ассамблеи ООН 10 сентября 2017 года 
на 72 сессии и 23 сентября 2020 года на 75 сессии выступил. It should be taken into consideration that much in ensuring the country's security is associated with the participation of the leader of our country in the international arena, his image, proposed initiatives, namely his speeches at the 72nd and 75th sessions of the UN General Assembly. Относительно проблем в Центральной Азии в 2017 году, президент Узбекистана Шавкат Мерзиёев с трибуны Организации Объединенных Наций заявил, Главным приоритетом своей внешней политики Узбекистан определяет регион Центральной Азии. Это осознанный выбор. Regarding the problems of Central Asia in 2017, the president of Uzbekistan, Shavkat Mirziyoyev, stated from the UN rostrum, Uzbekistan defines the region of Central Asia as the main priority of its foreign policy. This is a deliberate choice. Выступление президента на этом саммите были отмечены следующие достижения в этом направлении. Подписан договор о государственной границе между Узбекистаном и Киргизстаном. Запланирована и плодотворно проведена международная конференция «Центральная Азия. Одно прошлое и общее будущее. Сотрудничество ради устойчивого развития», на основе которой была принята уже в 2018 году Специальная резолюция Генеральной Ассамблеи ООН в поддержку усилий государств Центральной Азии по обеспечению безопасности и укреплению регионального сотрудничества. С трибуны ООН лидерам страны особое внимание было уделено вопросу совместного использования общих водных ресурсов в регионе. Отныне проблемы воды, мира и безопасности неразрывно связаны, и по предложению президента Узбекистана была принята специальная программа ООН по оказанию действенной помощи населению, пострадавшему от аральской катастрофы. In the president's speech at this summit, the following achievements were noted in this direction. The treaty of the state border between Uzbekistan and Kyrgyzstan was signed, an international conference, Central Asia, one past and a common future, cooperation for sustainable development was planned and successfully held, on the basis of which a special resolution of the UN General Assembly was adopted in 2018 to support the efforts of the Central Asia states to ensure security and strengthen regional cooperation. From the UN rostrum, the country's leader paid special attention to the issue of joint use of the region's most common water resources. From now on, the problems of water, peace and security are inextricably linked. At the suggestion of the president of Uzbekistan, a UN special program was adopted to provide effective assistance to the population affected by the Aral Sea disaster. Важным фактором обеспечения безопасности в регионе является ставшей уже глобальной проблема стабилизации обстановки в Афганистане. Узбекистан способствовал и способствует социально-экономическому восстановлению Афганистана, развитию его транспортной и энергетической инфраструктуры, подготовку его национальных кадров. An important factor in ensuring security in the region is the problem of stabilizing the situation in Afghanistan, which has already become global. Uzbekistan has contributed and is contributing to the socio-economic reconstruction of Afghanistan, the development of its transport and energy infrastructure, the training of its national personnel. Актуализируется не только в региональном, но и глобальном масштабе борьба против терроризма, экстремизма, насилия которые совершают люди моложе 30 лет. Принимая во внимание, что завтрашний день благополучие планеты связано именно с ними, Узбекистан предложил разработать унифицированный международно-правовой документ, который будет способствовать формированию и реализации всем международным сообществам молодежной политики, исходя из реалий бурного развития информационно-коммуникационных технологий. 
The fight against terrorism, extremism, and violence committed by people under the age of 30 is being actualized not only on a regional, but also on a global scale. Taking into account that tomorrow the well-being of the planet is associated with them, Uzbekistan proposed to develop a unified international legal document that will contribute to the formation and implementation of youth policy by the entire international community based on the realities of the rapid development of information and communication technologies. Диалектическим продолжением заботы о стабильности региона явилось предложение Узбекистана, сделанное на международной конференции «Центральная Азия. Одно прошлое и общее будущее. Сотрудничество ради устойчивого развития и взаимного процветания в Самарканде» считает, что наша главная цель общими усилиями превратить Центральную Азию с численностью свыше 70 миллионов человек стабильный, экономически развитый и процветающий регион. На бессрочной основе сделан договор между Узбекистаном, Казахстаном и Туркменистаном по поводу стыка границ. Согласованы границы с Кыргызстаном, возобновлены авиасообщения с Таджикистаном, растут объемы товарооборота, укрепляются связи между приграничными территориями, активизировалась a dialectical continuation of concern for the stability of the region was the proposal of Uzbekistan made at the international conference Central Asia, one past and a common future, cooperation for sustainable development and mutual prosperity in Samarkand to consider that our main goal is to transform Central Asia with over 70 million people to a stable, economically developed and prosperous region. On an indefinite basis, an agreement was made between Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan and Turkmenistan on the junction of borders. The borders with Kyrgyzstan were agreed upon and air connections with Tajikistan were resumed. The volume of trade is growing, types between border areas are strengthening, cultural and humanitarian exchanges have intensified. Новые инициативы по обеспечению стабильности в регионе и в мире, консолидация усилий человечества в этом направлении были выдвинуты на 75-й сессии Генеральной Ассамблеи ООН 23 сентября 2020 года. New initiatives to ensure stability in the region and in the world consolidate the efforts of mankind in this direction were put forward at the 75th session of the UN General Assembly on September 23, 2020. <laughs> Международный кодекс о добровольных обязательствах государств в период пандемии, где были отражены обязательства каждого государства перед своими гражданами и международными партнерами. В свою очередь отметим, что Узбекистан создал все возможные условия, чтобы каждый молодой человек смог занять достойное место и реализовать свой потенциал. Начали свою деятельность агентства по делам молодежи. Молодежный парламент. Усилилась политическая активность партии, различных институтов гражданского общества, в том числе СМИ. Особое внимание уделяется гендерному равенству, благодаря чему растет количество женщин в государственном управлении, а также в парламенте страны. Совместно с Международной организацией труда, Федерацией профсоюза Узбекистана и государственными органами искоренен принудительный и детский труд. Принята национальная стратегия по правам человека. С удовлетворением можно ответить, что 14 октября этого года Узбекистан впервые избран в Совет ООН по правам человека. The issue of stability in the world has begun to be considered also in connection with the issue of ensuring fundamental rights and freedoms, health and well-being of every person. Uzbekistan launched the initiative to develop under United Nations auspices an international code on voluntary commitments of states during the pandemic, which reflected the obligations of each state to its citizens and international partners. In turn, it should be noted that Uzbekistan has created all possible conditions so that every young person can take their rightful place and realize their potential. 
The Agency for Youth Affairs and the Youth Parliament have begun their activities. The political activity of parties, various in institutions of civil society, including the media, has increased. Special attention is paid to gender equality, due to which the number of women in public administration, as well as in the parliament of the country, is growing. Together with the International Labour Organization, the Federation of Trade Unions of Uzbekistan and state bodies, forced and child labor has been eradicated and the national human rights strategy has been adopted. It can be noted with satisfaction that on October 14th of this year, Uzbekistan was first elected to the UN Human Rights Council. То есть посредством обеспечения прав граждан обеспечивается стабильность в регионе. That is, through ensuring the rights of citizens, stability is assured in the region. Укреплению сотрудничества между странами, развитию культурного и духовного наследия региона будет содействовать проведение по инициативе Узбекистана в сотрудничестве с ЮНЕСКО в 2021 году в одном из древних городов Узбекистана, Хиве, международный форум «Центральная Азия на перекрестке мировых цивилизаций». Strengthening cooperation between countries, development of the cultural and spiritual heritage of the region will be facilitated by the holding of the International Forum Central Asia at the crossroads of world civilizations in one of the ancient cities of Uzbekistan, Kiva, in 2021 at the initiative of Uzbekistan in cooperation with UNESCO. Кроме выше отмеченных предложений, во имя обеспечения безопасности в Центральной Азии было предложено провести глобальный саммит по вопросам ликвидации нищеты и борьбы с бедностью, экологическими бедствиями, то есть дальнейшего решения задач устойчивого развития на уровне практического диалога с Организацией Объединенных Наций. In addition to the above mentioned proposals in the name of ensuring security in Central Asia, it was proposed to hold a global summit on the eradication of poverty and the fight against poverty environmental disasters, i.e. on the further solving of the tasks of sustainable development at the level of practical dialogue with the United Nations. Thank you for attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Sultanov Tvorsdikina, for your analytical report on the Uzbekistan role in achieving stability in Central Asia. And also thank you, Mariam Bocharashvili, student of, uh, of the University of World Economy of Di and Diplomacy, uh, for your translation. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, we're opening our next uh, final panel. It's uh, questions and feedback from audience. So we received uh, some questions, and I'd like to give them to our speakers. First, we have uh, questions about the Shanghai Cooperation Organization Center for Public Diplomacy. Uh, Mr. Fakhridin Adbasarov, uh, the questions for you. Uh, how to define the main factors influencing a country's image from the standpoint of public diplomacy? And the second question is how the response being by the country of so Uzbekistan is reaching out with initiatives based on around uh, public diplomacy. So uh, floor is yours. Mr. Fakhridin Adbasarov. Uh, Mr. Fakhridin, are you audible? I'm only a solicitor. Mm -hmm. Fakhridin Adbasarov. Yes, yes. 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 Can, can yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, we can hear you. Mr. Fakhridin Adbasarov, could you please uh, turn on your microphone? We can't hear you. Mr. Fakhridin. Yeah, I'm on yeah. here. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay. Are you answering to the questions? Okay, I think, yes, he has a problem with the uh, internet connection. And so I would like to address uh, some questions to Mr. Fakhridin Sattarov. Uh, yes, you have answered to the chat, but I would like to respond to it uh, lively. Does Uzbekistan have enough resources not only to provide the society, but also export to the other countries? And the uh, uh, um, question to Mr. Kamenjun Karimov is, as we know, to the coronavirus pandemic has affected many areas of human life and society all around the world. How do you see the post-viral world? 
will affect the existing foundation of our society, namely the policy pursuit of head of state. Pardon Satara, could you please turn on your microphone? Sorry, I keep yes. forgetting to unmute myself. Um, no. First, I would like to answer uh, to the question uh, given to Ms. Dr. Komil John Karimov. I would like to answer on his behalf. Um, the, the question was raised by Asa, or the person with the screen name. Uh, yes, the COVID-19 pandemic has affected many areas of society, both in this country and abroad. Now, there are still some uncertainties regarding the future mutation of the virus. Uh, as you may have heard the news in, in, in Denmark, they found a new strain of the virus. So I, I'm not sure what it's going yes. to be, what kind of a challenge or issues it's going to present, especially in light of the fact that we are desperately trying in, in many parts of the world, especially uh, in the United Kingdom, uh, University of Oxford, uh, they're trying to find a, a, a develop a vaccine. So, uh, uh, the, the, given these uncertainties, it would be very hard to predict the post-viral world, now how it's going to be like, how it's going to look like. Uh, but there are going to be some fundamental changes, and we are observing them today. Uh, at any event, uh, we should uh, remember that the, the post-viral world is going to be of our own making, and uh, which means that it, it is already in the making and we need uh, to increase uh, cooperation, uh, given that uh, one of the problems presented by the COVID pandemic was uh, quarantining people, uh, restricting air travel and uh, uh, in increased isolation. Uh, so in this regard, we need to find new ways of uh, economic uh, cooperation, new ways of uh, conducting trade. And uh, in general, we should find ways of mutually beneficial uh, ways of solving uh, in, uh, of issues that are facing us all in a mutually beneficial fashion. Yes. Uh, another that's... question. Uh, another question, which was about the resources in Uzbekistan, whether Uzbekistan has enough resources to ex for uh, export and uh, uh, for domestic purposes. I would like to say that Uzbekistan is a resource-rich country, whether it is in terms of mineral deposits or natural or agricultural resources, or also mm. it is a, a rich country in terms of human and social capital. Uh, currently, the point is not so much to export these resources, but we need to modernize the economy, to liberalize the economy, and use these resources to, uh, to produce stuff and then trade. Yep. Uh, so one of the central objectives of this country is to modernize uh, the economy, uh, the way we do business, and uh, in this way we need to attract more foreign direct investment, expand uh, trade links with foreign partners. Yes, and I think uh, that question is also regards to our expert on economics, Mr. Elbek Abdullah, how you can answer to the question about the resources. Uh, does Uzbekistan uh, have enough resources that uh, uh, not only to provide the society but also to uh, export them to another countries? Yeah, as uh, Dr. Faridun Satarf mentioned, it's not only about exporting but modernizing our economy. I would like to point one more moment. Uh, if we see uh, our export, uh, our share of exports, there is uh, export of agricultural products, export of industry products, and export of our services. Uh, in this share, we should analyze not only our uh, total export, but uh, the main uh, shares in this export. Uh, as we know, in the last two decades, there are, uh, the share of raw materials uh, were higher than uh, uh, finished products. But uh, uh, 
after modernizing our economy and after uh, some development, we should increase uh, at least uh, intermediate uh, export of intermediate products or uh, finished uh, goods and products. Uh, in order mm -hmm. to achieve, uh, in order to achieve it, uh, as Dr. Faridun Sattarov mentioned, we should modernize our economy, and there should be some changes in uh, our industry and agriculture. Ah, yes, thank you very much for answering to the question. And uh, Mr. Fakhrizin Basarov, are you here? I think uh, not. And uh, I, yes, uh, thank you very much, everyone. So I'd like to give the floor to Ginisha Devani uh, as a uh, project and events coordinator to make a uh, conclusion remarks. Uh, Ginisha, are you here? Yes, President. Thank you so much. And wow, what a wonderful discussion session by conducted by all the experts and what were like different assumptions or the arguments that were made. So I'm really delightful that we hosted this panel discussion and we got uh, amazing reviews from the participants as well. I would like to uh, give my warm thanks to all these speakers for enlightening us and our participants with your knowledge and most importantly, something which is beyond our intellect and experiences with Uzbekistan. And as uh, Ritaba mentioned earlier that we as like people outside Uzbekistan are not much aware about the country as in like the politics or maybe the culture or how the economy develops there. So it was wonderful to hear thoughts from our experts and speakers. Uh, my warm thanks again goes to our most importantly, our partners, those who have helped us in organizing this beautiful event, and our wonderful moderator, who is Fazluddin, and also our country coordinator for Uzbekistan IFS Asia. I would also like to thank our participants for being more active throughout the discussion and giving up your thoughts and questions for our speakers and experts. You are like the lifeline for this discussion, so thank you so much. Most importantly, you are most welcome to be a part of our IEPS upcoming events as well. And you can participate, you can be a member of IEPS or sit on the other side of the table. So you can get on to more information from our social media handles and you can mail us or write to us anytime. So we are more than happy to help you. So thank you very much. Thanks to everyone. Thank you very much, Ganesha, uh, for such warm comments about our event. Unfortunately, our event is already coming to the end. Uh, summing up today's conference, we can say that, as noted by the speakers, the action strategy is a unique example of political thinking of the head of our state and the people in strengthening the independence, ensuring a peaceful and prosperous life, creating a solid guarantee of protecting the rights, freedoms, and interests of citizens of Uzbekistan, as well as strong social policy pursued in the, our country. Uh, dear participants of our discussion, on November 10th, uh, all civilized humanity will celebrate the International Day, uh, Day of Science, and I believe that this event will also make a significant contribution to the scientific perception of the world by us, uh, the use on the 21st century. As a representatives of New Uzbekistan, we are always open to close partnership with our peers in all countries of the world. We want peace and uh, stability on Earth. Thank you all for your active participation in our promising international forum of scientific use. Thank you all for your attention. Thank you very much for coming. Keep yourself. All this has been last but not the least. All the participants and these, uh, all the audiences are most welcome to fill in the feedback form, which will be coming right now to your email IDs. So do give us your feedback regarding the event and the speakers and us. Yes. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hamma ke khair, yash holing, omon bulling.